Hewitt is a 40-year-old single mother of three. Before the start of the war, Hewitt used to work as a merchant and support her three children alone. On the onset of the war, Eritrean and Ethiopian troops would bombard her town, forcing her and her family to leave their home. Hewitt would then run away to hide in her relative's house, but would get separated from her 19-year-old eldest son on the way. It was on the 25th of November. It's been almost two years. They came to our area from two sides, Abi's soldiers on one side and Isaias on the other. When they came, we fled to the wilderness. I got there on the 25th and left on the 28th. For three days, we didn't leave the house. I sneaked out of the house, but outside, it was deserted. My son was nowhere to be seen. I went back into the house and a gun was fired at me and I fell on the floor. The man who fired at me asked what was wrong with me. I told him I had lost my son and that I was looking for him. He asked me whether I was a spy. I told him I was not and that I was simply looking for my son. He said he was suspicious of me and took me with him. The Eritrean soldier would later take Hewitt to a military camp where she would witness the body of her son and her neighbors lying on the ground. He said, if you say your son has died, come take a look. He was an Eritrean soldier. When I got there, I saw so many dead bodies lying on the ground, all of them residents of my town. Then I saw my son's body. I screamed, and he hit me on the back of my head with his rifle. I fell on top of my son's body, and two of my front teeth fell out. I asked the soldier to kill me. I told him I didn't have a reason to live anymore. He wouldn't spare me a bullet. I saw even more bodies lying on the ground. All were from my town. I screamed even more. I saw my neighbor with two of her children lying there. Hewitt's agony would not end here. She says she was dragged away by Ethiopian soldiers moments after seeing her young son's body. She would then be held in sexual slavery and then gang-raped for days while being accused of being a junta. Then Amharic-speaking soldiers came. Seven of them dragged me away and raped me multiple times. I was not aware of what was happening to me. I was crying after seeing my son's body. I don't remember well. But after some days, they dragged me away and left me at my house. We are doing this to you because you are born from a junta, they would say. When I asked them why they wouldn't spare a bullet for me, they said it was all because I was a junta. Hewitt says after the assault, she became sick and hid in her house for months in fear of being seen in that condition. She says soldiers would come to her house and slaughter her sheep, steal her grains and her gold. I became sick and mentally unstable. I locked myself inside the house for fear of people seeing my condition. On top of that, the soldiers would come to my house and slaughter my sheep, steal my grains and my gold and continue to assault me. Justice is yet to be served for tens of thousands of women like Hewitt, who have been doubly victimized as they have been subjected to sexual violence and their family members killed with impunity.